I I think I've always wanted to do video creating. So uh, the subject that came to mind was what you got to what got you to enjoy video creating and what got you to decide on posting. Yeah, <laughs> big old um document in front of me that I've been writing while I was at work. I, I There are thoughts that come across my mind a lot at work and I tend to try to work it work it through my work it through my thought process and I would say the earliest I think I've said it before on the podcast but I thought about I, I've always thought about uh, making film because when I was little um, I had the opportunity when I was younger I had the opportunity to make film because when I was in sophomore uh, sophomore year I was given a camera by my uh, mom and it was great it was, it was a fun camera it was a fun like sony camera i ended up using it to take a lot of pictures and because i enjoy taking pictures because my dad yeah i think it started with my dad it started with my dad because uh whenever we went on vacation we would always go to california we re- uh we went to europe in my middle school age and then He'd always be taking pictures. Uh, this was the birth of he wanted to take photos. Well, because my, my dad took photos of my family. And for his for him growing up, taking pictures was a way to document memories, to record memories that you had with your family, to record the good times, to reflect during the bad. And when I was growing up, I just wanted a camera because I wanted to start taking photos with my dad, like my dad too. And video and photo photography turned into videography a lot later when I was starting to understand the magic of film. So one of my favorite films growing up was like all those Kung Fu films and whatnot. So as an as a 90s kid, we were bombarded with just film like Jackie Chan, Jet Li, uh, Donnie Yen, uh uh, Jack Van Dyne or whatever, um, Sylvester Stallone with the Rocky Balboa, um, Rambo. There's a, there's a lot of things to where those kind of films, as along with the rom coms like Hitch, like uh, Thirteen Going on Thirty. There are films that have had the same way of invoking emotions to people, much like how food does. You craft food, and then when the people consume food, they have a reaction to it. It's a happy mood. They, it's a way for people to take a moment out of their day to just relax. And that's what I loved about fil- uh, f- filmography, much like fil- f- photography, because it's it's a it is a freeze frame of a good moment in time, much like how film can invoke inspirational like action much like how food can inspire a moment to like enjoy this food in a moment of in a moment uh like with everything going on because that was a whole that was the whole thing so i i enjoyed making film and one of my biggest first films i made was a video for a history for history class with joanna uh, we made a video based on the teapot scandal, the uh, the Watergate scandal. Uh, it, it's history. I don't, I, it's political. I can't remember what it was, but essentially he was embezzling money and he got caught doing it. And so, <coughs> sorry, I loved it. I loved the whole process of making film. I loved the process of creating content. I liked the pro- I liked the process of when. We were going through bloopers, and I think uh, Rush Hour was one of the huge impacts of my life to where when I saw the bloopers during the end credit, it was really fun because the the ending reel of films that showed bloopers showed the love and showed the energy that people had from filming, and it was, people laughed about it. People laughed about their uh, their mistakes in filming when they said a bad line when Jackie Chan tried to say seafood when he said when he wants to say secret service it was funny there was times 
um, in Rush Hour to War. Damn, we won't see him in Rush Hour 3. Things like that, breaking out of character and causing people to laugh, those are, again, moments in time to where people really enjoyed making videos and things like that. People enjoyed what videos did for you. Videos gave you a moment of time with everything going on to just laugh, to sit down, to inspire, to have you escape from the things you've been going through today, going through lately. And so it's been really fun to work on it now. And come 2009, that's when YouTube first started. And I'll admit, I didn't catch on really quickly that you can, that it was an actual thing that you can post videos on there. I didn't know about posting videos until it was too late. So that's my fault for not jumping the bandwagon. I remember watching things like Just Kidding Films, Wong Fu Productions. I remember watching uh, YouTube and looking at the Taeyang dance for Wedding Dress and then performed it for my then girlfriend. And it's so funny to wear like those kind of films taught people how to dance it taught people life lessons it taught people it connected people across the world with each other if you have the chance to watch the film if you have the chance to watch a form of content now the content can be audible the content can be photography or videography the fact that you can connect with people who is not in your location the fact that you can impact people across states, across countries, with your video, with your photo, is a magical opportunity that the internet provided for us. And Pinterest was a whole thing. Tumblr was a big thing, like in the early, in the late 2010s. And I, I was a consumer. I was a consumer before becoming a creator. I began, I began creating essentially right after I moved out. So in 2014, 2015, I moved out. I was given the opportunity and time to start creating. So I first made a video about my journeys with baptism with my uh, domestic violence. I talked about it. I talked about how I had a hard time and I had certain dark thoughts, but I was able to express my emotions of that time and people saw it. People were in listening to me it was a fun scary place of the internet to where i didn't change when youtube changed but i definitely felt like i changed the moment i was able to sit down talk about how i felt and then post it and then see the encouraging thoughts and at the infancy of my youtube channel i was seeing like people commenting i saw people saying hey you're not alone this is normal for people to experience in their lifetime and it's it's tough knowing that some people have these experiences and they can't voice it and when they do try to voice it it can be a vacuum where no one hears you but the reality is there now in 2020 uh there are so many ways to let your voice be heard you can now produce film to like you can make films for your friends that happen to create, like, attraction. There's been some, like, there's been, been people like uh, Sea Dog VA. There's friends like The Anime Man, like uh, Gaunt, uh, Giguk. Uh, essentially, they, in the, in the infancy of YouTube, they made VMAs. They made AM, uh, AMAs, anime music video, AMVs, A Asian, they made content for their friends and it happened to become a product that the rest of the world that were not their friends to enjoy and that's just really cool about the the magic of video creating you can share it with your friends and then you can share it with even strangers yet they will enjoy it with you because you made something much like a photo like 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 and I I decided to really start posting casually or semi-professionally. I, I will never say professionally because I don't have the team, but I will I started posting because I wanted to share my experiences with people. I wanted to share my experience with Devil May Cry 
and that was the first game I put on the channel, I believe. Uh, there were games that I wanted to share my experience on and hoped people did the same. There were some views that was it was really good. It was really it had a lot of transaction uh, traction, but even with the zero views, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of content on YouTube to where I have like zero views, and <clears throat> I think that's okay. I think that's okay because even if there are no views, I do. That was a snapshot in my life to where I enjoyed that content. Not a lot of people saw me streaming Final Fantasy, but pe but it's still there. There is a snapshot of my enjoyment, and that's really good. I, I love the fact that for as scary and as mentally draining it is, to post something and to see that no one saw it, to see that no, there are no likes, there are no views, you have to understand that even though no one saw it, you were there. It's a testament to what you did. And video creating, it's really great. It's a really fun exercise to acknowledge that you're still here. And I, I like that. I like that about uh, video creating. I like the whole process of the bloopers, uh, finding things that are funny to yourself. Um, video creating is really fun because you can definitely share it with people. If you can. And if no one uh, watches it, fine. You shared it. You've done your part. And you felt closer to the content that you're talking about. You feel closer to the game that you made a video about. You feel closer to yourself. If you did a personal vlog, if you vlogged your experience and shared your home video, essentially, to the world about California, if you shared a video experience, if you shared your home video about your experience in Texas, that 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 is something that you can share. You can show somebody. And I really enjoyed the experience that came from doing it. When I was filming my experience in California, I'll admit it was very, it got weird sometimes. When I was trying to film my experience walking down the uh, the walkway, the street, for the theme park, there was a, there was a really, there was a, there was an older man that got frustrated that said, and I heard, just focus on walking, put your phone, you got to put your phone down and just start, just keep walking. Because I'll admit, he might have felt that way because he had to go somewhere himself, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him for feeling like, why is this guy in my way? I want to go somewhere, but he's slowing me down. That makes sense. I can understand your upsetness, but I I felt like I had the obligation to share my experience because I understand also that sometimes my friends and family may not have uh, had the chance to go travel. There's chances to where my friends and family may not have the opportunity to go places. And I feel like by making this content, sharing it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, any platform, the moment someone sees it, I just shared with them, hey, I went somewhere. What do you think? And like that's me still sharing my experience, and I'm happy that I had the opportunity to share it. Whether or not they tuned in, tuned out about what I shared... That is on them. I will never force someone to watch my content. I don't want people to be forced to see my experiences and to see like why I enjoyed it. I don't want I don't I'm not trying to convince people why I made this YouTube video. Back then it wasn't you just making YouTube videos. Back then it was just you making a, a photo snapping a photo of you and your family. That's you Making a, making a photo album for your family later on when they come over. Now it's an age to where, hey, you want to see what I experienced in YouTube? Come on, l let me show you on YouTube what I did in California. And that's how you share your content with, with people now. Nowadays, people are compressing how they share things. You can have videos about photo with photo collages about what you saw. And that's okay. That's acceptable. Nowadays, I've seen less people have photo albums, albums, and the photo albums are more 
condensed to just family. Family photo, cool. Family photos in there, great. There's less scenic and less photos of places nowadays because why take a photo of the Empire State Building when you can film it with you at, in it, with you in the picture? That's so much more value than you taking a picture of the Eiffel Tower and you see it in somebody's photo album. It's much more valuable if you have a photo album with strictly family and people. And then the scenic things you can share on YouTube. You can share as a video, home video. The age of the internet has definitely changed the meaning of video creating. But I definitely enjoy it. I love the, the ability to just record my experience. To share it with my family. And to share it with my friends if I couldn't take them. And there's a lot to say for when it comes to video creation. But for me... I found it very valuable. I found it very comforting. It's a whole process to where I don't feel alone because I can, a viewer can watch your content and hear you out. And if, and if you had like a whole thing to where you are, you're struggling, you can watch that person's video and you can hear them with those words of affirmation. It is a tool. The video creating is a tool to connect with people. And I'm very happy nowadays to casually do video creating. Nowadays, I don't have time to record videos for gaming as much because my life is picking up. I am now more focused on trying to improve the quality of living at home. And that does take time from video creating, so... As well as working. <laughs> working takes a lot of time out of me. However, and definitely when it comes to physical fitness, I do f sometimes I do my workouts at home because, again, I don't have much time anymore. But that also sacrifices my time to game to have my time to exercise. And that's okay. I want a healthy body. That's all right. So I, I do enjoy the fact that this still gives me a platform and opportunity to just talk. Definitely stretch and massage the muscle in my head. Because that's what it does. That, that's what, some of the best things about like video recording is a way to vlog and document. To blog and document. Because ultimately, film is a way for documentation. And I hope you enjoyed this short video too. Oh, God. <laughs> but uh, what do you think? How... Uh, how has video impacted your life? It's definitely helped mine, and it's a great way to really just talk through my issues, talk through my thought processes, sees. Yeah. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, if you liked it, please consider following on YouTube, subscribing on, uh, subscribing on YouTube, following on Twitch. They're both free. Follow on Facebook. Follow on Snapchat. On my social, follow my social media. It's free, except if you subscribe to face, uh, Twitter. But Twitter, you can, you don't subscribe to Twitter. But follow. I am rambling. I am very sorry. Please follow me on my social media. It's in the links down below. Hope you had a good day. And as always, my name's Tyler. I'm your friend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.